also live streaming this out onto YouTube uh, live, um, shared it a little bit on social. Uh, and for those of you who want to go back and watch the, uh, the presentation, um, you can check out the EXP Realty uh, YouTube page and uh, we'll kind of go, uh, go over some things about EXP. Uh, first of all, and I'm just gonna kind of jump through a couple slides uh, here, uh, you know, who we are, business model and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but I'll, I'll give you a little intro on myself. Uh, I'm the founder of eXp Realty, uh, started it back in 2009 and uh, right at the bottom of the housing market. And prior to that, I had actually ran uh, a, um, a team-based brokerage. We were in um, uh, uh, six states. I had three physical offices. We had uh, three teams that were uh, uh, co-located actually in, in other brokerages. And uh, uh, we'd actually back in 2002, actually, I'll, I'll go back a little bit further. Uh, 2002, I actually got my real estate license. Um, I'd got out of uh, kind of technology and, and some startup stuff. I was looking for my next project. It just turned out that real estate was my next project. And in 2002, uh, I got my license, built uh, a very fast personal career in residential real estate, rookie of the year, first year. Uh, my fourth year in the business, had a team doing over 60 million in production, top 50 nationally with Keller Williams. Um, 2007 um, broke out um, to actually be a, as an independent uh, a broker owner with um, a running a team-based real estate structure. We did about 78 million in production uh, that year. And 2008, we were on track to do about 100 million. And then the market came to a screeching halt. Uh, so very much like what we're experiencing right now was exactly the same thing that we were going through uh, in in 2008, and uh, the the velocity of of the speed at which the uh, the housing market came to an abrupt stop very, feels very much like what we're going through right now for totally different reasons. So back then it was because uh, you know obviously the uh, the economy. Uh, anybody could get a, uh, to, could get a loan. Uh, there's a lot of people defaulting on their loans. And as a result, it, it created a tailspin in the economy. Uh, this, of course, is different because uh, most people who have been buying the last number of years since that period of time have you know, put 20, 25% down on their homes. I'm sure there's some that's a little bit less, uh, but uh, more down payments, uh, better uh, look at credit scores and those types of things. Uh, but obviously with the uh, COVID-19 and the coronavirus, it has, uh, in the last six weeks, uh, we went from a, one of the most thriving economies to, to potentially going into something akin to a cross between 9-11 um, uh, and, uh, and the housing crisis in 2008. So uh, in 2008, uh, when things changed, we we went from selling back in uh, uh, April of 2008. We went from selling about seven to ten million dollars a month in production. And I remember in October we closed seven hundred thousand dollars in in closed production you know, for the month of October, uh, and that's huge reduction. That was a ninety percent reduction in our sales volume, uh, you know, versus a a prior month when we were at our peak. And so this is happening in a fairly, fairly short order. But uh, in 2000, um, 2008, we ended up raising a little bit of money, went into 2009. And in early 2009, uh, in, in April, we, we, we came up with the, the, the basic concept of how do we build a real estate brokerage that is, uh, can weather uh, the financial uh, downturn that will eventually show up in the market again. And we just sort of made that premise and we said, okay, if, if we're going to do that, we need to build a real estate brokerage that's not dependent on bricks and mortar. And then we need to be able to uh, be able to leverage staffing costs in a way that actually made sense. And, and that was the basic premise. And so from April through uh, about August of uh, 2009, we worked on a business model, which I'm going to show you here in a minute, which is eXp Realty, which has been organically the fastest growing residential real estate brokerage in the history of residential real estate. And we, never, we, we didn't plan on that. We just wanted to build a really great model that was sustainable in good times and bad times. 
and, and we wanted to make it really great for agents. We wanted to put them in the driver's seat um, in, in relative to their business. And we wanted to ultimately create something that, that ultimately would be able to weather uh, storms that would happen at some point in the future. And, and now we're in it. So, so that was kind of, that was, that's a little bit of just uh, my history, uh, but we launched uh, eXp Realty in 2009. Um, here's, a, here's a little um, just timeline on, um, on it. And by the way, for those of you who are new to, uh, to this environment, you can actually go up to screen zoom uh, on the top of your screen and actually zoom in on any of the screens or the, or, or the, or, or the center of the screen, et cetera. So, uh, but we launched in 2009, we got uh, featured uh, early on uh, by the, uh, by Stefan Swanepoel as potentially the Amazon of real estate. Um, we, Inman had uh, ranked us as one of the most uh, innovative real estate brokerages uh, twice, actually, back in 2010 or 11, they did, uh, um, we, we got ranked as a, uh, as a finalist. And then last year we got ranked as a in Inman Innovator Award winner. Uh, but more importantly, one of the things, and we'll talk a little bit about it, uh, we were, um, uh, we've been ranked for the last three years in a row as a best place to work in the small to mid-sized company category. And even this last year, we were ranked in the top 100 for uh, best place to work for large companies. And, uh, and we've been able to do that in a way that uh, without the, the physical infrastructure that's normally associated with a company. And we've built a great culture, we've got great collaboration, and uh, it's, been, it's been pretty cool to be able to do that. Um, explosive growth and, and uh, um, uh, you know, we, we've grown uh, literally uh, from, from a very small number of agents. We started with about 24 agents back in October of 2009. We're now, actually, we need to update this slide. Uh, we're now in excess of 28,000 agents and brokers in all 50 states, seven Canadian provinces, and we're also in the UK and, and Australia. And we've got some, you know, opportunities to potentially open some other countries. Um, and uh, we'll see when that happens, uh, given that we're circling the wagons a little bit, just because we, of what's going on in the market, but uh, we, we should have some other countries that we, we're, uh, we should be growing into as well. So uh, ex explosive uh, growth. One of the reasons why we've been able to really pull this off. Glenn or whatever is talking. And, and uh, um, let me just close the microphone. Turn my microphone on. Um, so the, um, uh, one of the reasons why we've been able to do this is we really started from day one with some really strong um, core values. And uh, we, we articulated them uh, more formally a few years ago, but we've always been about transparency, collaboration, sustainability, uh, fun, agility. Right now we're practicing agility in a major way. Innovation, you know, the way you sort of think about what a real estate brokerage is and how it operates. Uh, and, and then, you know, innovation, integrity, community. So all these core values are drivers to ultimately create a really cool place to work and, and uh, uh, a really great way to sort of engage with, uh, with things. Uh, by the way, for those of you who have some questions, uh, and I know Randy's saying, hey, type them in here, you can also go to the Slido link uh, that's actually on the outside and you can actually use the Slido. Uh, those will pop up uh, on one of my screens here. I've, I've got a little, little uh, war room with three screens and my laptop. So got quite a quite a, um, a setup here. Um, you know, our business model, and, and we'll talk a little bit about this, uh, you know, in, um, you can sort of think about where uh, Netflix and Blockbuster were a number of years ago, and obviously Blockbuster, I think there, there may be one remaining store uh, that was uh, you know, publicized here a year ago that still exists for Blockbuster, I think that may be kept for legacy purposes, but, um, Back in, in the 2000s, uh, early 2000s, uh, everybody's on dial-up. 2002, I remember it, uh, you know, we were on dial-up connections. We didn't have high-speed internet at our homes. Um, and, and, and Netflix was mailing DVDs, but they had a plan for, for ultimately, as internet speeds picked up, uh, to be able to actually stream um, uh, video to, through, through the internet to people's homes. Uh, we know what took place. 
uh, you know, they actually um, offered to merge with Blockbuster at one point in time for, I think, something like $50 million. Blockbuster kind of laughed at them. Uh, and, uh, and then once high speed internet got into everybody's homes, which was really later in, you know, by 2008, 2009, um, approximately the same time that EXP launched, uh, there was finally high speed internet uh, enough places that uh, Netflix could start to really be a streaming uh, platform. And, and that's just continued to, to grow and take off. And in fact, it's one of the few stocks that has performed um, modestly well in, in the last few weeks because there's so many people now that are upping their Netflix subscription because they're sequestered uh, or, or, or sheltering at home. Um, I don't even know if there's Circuit City still around, but obviously Amazon has just announced that they're adding another 100,000 people to their workforce because so much demand for online shopping, uh, obviously um, uh, offline sh shopping uh, for the time being has come to a virtual standstill. Uh, other than groceries, other than maybe some takeout food. Uh, obviously, different parts of the country have different rules. But if you're in some of the states that are you know, basically shelter at home, uh, you're going to do all your shopping, if you are doing any shopping, pretty much on Amazon. Um, I did, just as a, an aside, uh, I need, we burned out our blender because we, it wasn't getting a huge amount of use prior to, to what's going on. We've been using it here lately. We burned it out, found out Amazon back ordered on blenders we actually went on to bed bath and beyond and supposedly we're going to have a new blender on thursday so just a little little tip that there are other places that you can actually do some ordering um and then uh and it, it, it's becoming pretty stark uh contrast between what it meant to be a traditional real estate brokerage and and exp realty and uh, when we talk about uh, traditional real estate brokerages um, you know we, we all know who they are, but anybody who's got a physical footprint for a, to a large part of the country, you're not even allowed to step foot in those in those real estate brokers. New York uh, came out with some some uh, uh, rules yesterday, uh, and, and that they just talked about is uh, real estate is not considered essential service. Um, uh, real estate agents aren't allowed to do open houses, show property, list you know do to. I think they could probably still list property. But there's a there's a whole bunch of things you just can't do uh, in terms of of of, uh, of showing, and so we're all kind of in that boat together, um, whether it be EXP or Keller Williams or or Corcoran or um, you know whoever it might be. Uh, but um, but we're all still able to collaborate, work together. We've got uh, we'll talk a little bit about classes and other things um, that we're able to do sort of in this virtual campus. So. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of things that have definitely changed, but uh, just like those who are in this campus, uh, those of you who are watching on the U uh, YouTube live channel, uh, there's a lot of ways to collaborate um, outside of a physical office. And what we're finding, and and we we've, we've known this for a long time, is that for in a lot of ways, uh, your productivity will go up. Uh, offices can be somewhat of a distraction uh, to actually getting work done, but the flip side of it is, is that offices represented a place to socialize, to have conversations, to have water cooler, uh, uh, serendipitous collisions with other people who um, you might uh, be able to uh, put stuff together with. And uh, right now with what's going on, uh, you know, we're able to continue to do some of that in, in our virtual environment. Again, I don't want to uh, harp on it too much because it's a, we're kind of in a, a strange uh, time um, but it is a real meaningful uh, differentiator that we've been leveraging for the last 10 plus years. And, and uh, the last few weeks, it's become uh, apparent how, how much of a uh, enabler that is for, for what we're doing. Um, let's go to the next slide. Uh, let's see here. Um, you know, as a, uh, because we don't have a lot of that uh, physical infrastructure, uh, we're, we're able to do a lot of things. Uh, you'll, you'll hear some of the folks, uh, maybe Randy will talk about it a little bit later, but we've got over 50 hours of live training taking place every week. In fact, right now, one of the cool things we're, we're doing is we're pulling together a huge number. We've got over seven, I think we've got 700 icon agents in EXP, something, a uh, pretty large number. And these are agents that have, um, have hit certain production benchmarks. Uh, they have, uh, uh, and and um, we're starting to rally around those folks to do 
uh, upwards of one um, uh, class per quarter. So if you think about 700 icons, each doing one class per quarter, uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of classes from the best of the best in the industry, and we're we're rallying that group together to do a lot of that. Part of it's uh, with regard to, to we we had an event that we had scheduled in uh, April, our shareholder event, and uh, um, we're we're now going to actually do that virtually, which is pretty cool. We're going to have three four thousand people attend that, um, and uh, even though we're going to go to Orlando and Disney World. Uh, we're going to, uh, to to do that in here. So um, lots of, you know, our, our cloud campus environment is pretty, is pretty cool. Um, you can literally be connected from anywhere and, and be able to bring, you know, people in world, have conversations with folks uh, and, and be supported. Uh, Real-time support, we've got support for every part of your business that you can think of. And then now that we're international, um, it's, uh, it's cool to be able to, and collaborate with folks in the UK, Australia, obviously Canada, which is right next door to the US. Um, but uh, we're able to do a lot of international collaboration, which, um, you know, we've got uh, Stephen Lee leads up Australia, Adam Day leads up uh, the UK, Deborah Stevens and a whole group of folks lead up Canada. We all are highly connected as an organization um, across multiple boundaries, not just city, not just state. But also internationally, so it's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. And then the last piece is uh, equity opportunities. Um, you know, we've got uh, we've got a revenue share plan, which we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, but we also have uh, the ability for agents to earn equity in in EXP World Holdings, which is the parent company of of uh, EXP Realty. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit about our cloud campus environment. Um, you know, we talk about no desk fees. We do have. Uh, a monthly technology fee, which basically covers all of our technology from SkySlope to, to, to KV Core, to our virtual campus, to, uh, and it even includes all of the education that we provide for, uh, for free. We don't, we don't charge corporately for any of the training that's uh, provided inside of EXP World, uh, which is pretty cool. So we don't have to, you know, sort of offer that as a, as a, you know, um, a, as an additional cost, uh, but you're able to work from anywhere. Uh, and and if you're if you had bricks and mortar expenses as a brokerage or as a boutique team, uh, you can cut that expense out um, entirely if you choose to. Obviously, at this point, a lot of people can't even go to their offices. Um, so if you're working in EXP world, we've got ways to sort of work work together, and and that means that um, you know broker owners, uh, agents, and others can um, net more because they don't have some of that expense that would be normally associated with their business. Totally paperless. And then of course, instant access to training, some of it on demand, uh, some of it uh, uh, being stuff that's you know pre-recorded. We've got a, a educational uh, platform where you can get educated on a lot of things. We've got a cool marketing center. So again, we'll talk a little bit about some of that. So live training, um, there are tons and tons and tons of classes. And if you want to just see some of the classes, uh, and I see Randy just put it in there, uh, you can go to expcloud.com and you can actually check out a ton of the classes that are going on. Um, and uh, if you want to come into any of those, uh, you know, certainly uh, request a guest pass. We'd be happy to, to have you check it out, uh, experience it yourself, uh, see what it's like to collaborate in our full campus. Um, for th those of you who are, uh, coming in as as just to the EXP explain, you've got limited access to just the auditorium. But those, once you get a guest pass, you can actually uh, uh, visit basically the entire EXP campus. So, um, and then uh, as Randy mentioned, check out the uh, Fast Start series. So, um, let's go to real time support. We talked a little bit about it, but we've got everything from technology, finance, agent services. Uh, we've got, uh, we, we provide tons of training on KV Core. So uh, those of you who are into internet lead gen or managing your database or what have you, we've, we've uh, partnered a number of years ago, did the first enterprise deal with, um, with conversion, which, which ultimately um, became inside real estate uh, of any company nationwide. Turn, now lots of companies are licensing KV Core because of the success of, of of the agents um, inside of EXP. And so a lot of brokers do offer that now, 
but uh, we've got tons and tons of support and we're continuing to innovate in, in that regard uh, all the time. So you can see some of the support hours. Uh, the other cool thing is that because of the way we use a platform called Workplace by Facebook, which I'll touch on a little bit, um, as well as the, the, the world, uh, there's a lot of crowdsourcing of support. So even if our, our formal support isn't in place, uh, because of the way we use a lot of technology, uh, you're able to collaborate with other agents and brokers who, quite frankly, want to help our fellow EXP uh, family uh, be successful. And, and just the way we've got this set up, it, it's pretty cool. Um, international collaboration, talked a little bit about that, but you know we, we're now, again, in, uh, um, in multiple countries. And, uh, and so it really is, is pretty cool uh, that we're able to trade ideas um, across the pond or down under or, or anywhere that EXP grows to. And, and so there's, uh, there's lots, of, lots of great ways to sort of collaborate and, and build uh, in that regard. Um, so uh, here's kind of a little map of, of where we went so far, uh, but uh, you know, as we uh, come out of the current um, environment, hopefully in the not too distant future, um, we'll continue to expand around the globe. Our ability to expand internationally is, is uh, it's really such a competitive advantage because we don't have to put in all of the physical infrastructure that goes into traditional brokerage. And it really appeals to a, uh, a broad section of agents that exist in the marketplace. I just got back from Australia um, just over a week ago, and uh, um, we actually moved up our flight a couple days to come back just because of what was going on out there. But uh, we visited with agents all over Australia. And the big thing that we noted was that agents, entrepreneurial agents in, in, in other countries uh, literally uh, are, are hampered by their existing brokerage to actually build their own personal brand uh, because the, the brokerages, in, at least in, in some countries, I'm noting that uh, they're about, I, I estimate about 13 years behind where we are in the US relative to agents building their own personal brands and with everything we've got going on in social media and all the other things, uh, the ability for agents to actually build their brand um, in other countries uh, is an even bigger opportunity for those entrepreneurial agents. And so it's, ex it's, it's exciting to be able to, to help and collaborate and trade ideas, but then they've also got great ideas too of stuff we haven't done here yet. Um, the, the auction process in Australia and the way they approach it actually has a lot of merit. And it's something that I would think that, you know, entrepreneurial agents in the US and Canada um, uh, would would be uh, um, wise to at least consider some of the things that they're doing in, in some of these other countries as being opportunities uh, here in, uh, in the US. Uh, so we're also a public company. Um, so back in 2013, and this was, this is pretty, um, uh, this is a pretty important piece. And when we started EXP Realty in 2009, I refer to myself as a focus group of one. So I started at uh, Prudential um, at, at a local office in Bellingham, Washington. Uh, and uh, I was the number one, um, I was the rookie of the year and I was the number one buyer's agent my first full year at the office, number three in the office. And so I'm obviously I'm, uh, you know, I'm a driven high D personality, I, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm big on sort of the production side, but I actually went into the office and said, hey guys, can I, can I get a piece of the brokerage? I'd like to become an owner. And I was turned down, flat turned down. And so um, in 2004, I moved uh, to, uh, to Keller Williams and, um, and, and quickly became the number one producing team in the office that I was in by a significant margin. I was number I think in 2006, uh, I was number three in the um, in the region, which was I think Washington, Oregon, uh, um, uh, Idaho, and Alaska, if I'm not mistaken. But I was number three, so I was doing a lot of volume, you know, 60 million in production, and uh, and I I wanted to get some ownership at the local office, and they didn't offer me any either. Uh, at least not a meaningful amount. I was offered actually 1%. Um, uh, but when, when I left, the, the office, unfortunately, um, had to be taken over by 
uh, some local agents who would take over the bills because we represented such a high up amount of the production in the office that they had to, to put an injection in the office to keep it going. Um, they made it through the other side, which is great, but you know, had they offered me um, a meaningful amount of equity, which at the time I was willing to pay for, um, you know, we might not be sitting here today. Uh, but I always think about the idea of being an equity owner as being one of the uh, biggest opportunities that uh, I think people who are who are uh, who who think long term uh, would want to be uh, to have. The other piece that uh, I noted back then, and it was a personal observation, was that the only thing I could get ownership of, even if I was offered ownership at the local level, uh, a meaningful ownership, is I could only get ownership of the local office. And, um, and, and that's where obviously the biggest amount of, of, uh, of capital spend is done for a, a real estate franchise or brand is that local office, but there was no way to get ownership at the, at the parent company level. So, um, you know, Remax, of course, you can certainly buy Remax shares. Uh, they're publicly traded now, uh, at the time they, they weren't, um, um, certainly, uh, uh, Gary Keller is not really sharing his equity uh, with the uh, with the, the masses, um, and uh, and so that was something that always always bugged me, always eluded me that you know the parent company, in, in even in a downturn, uh, should survive. And so you know I don't think that Remax Corp Remax as a brand's going away. I don't think Keller Williams as a brand's going away. I don't think that uh, uh, many of the brands that we we currently know. Uh, on a national level are going away, but the um, a lot of the franchised offices are going to have a lot of financial challenges in the next um, 30, 60, 90, maybe six months to a year, and many of them are going to have to close their doors, and they won't have anything to show for it because they're not shareholders with the, the parent company. So um, owning, uh, so share ownership was a big deal in 2013. Uh, we actually bought and actually reverse merged ourselves into a public company for the single purpose of sharing equity with our agents and brokers. That was the that was the whole thing. We didn't do an IPO. We didn't go grab a bunch of Wall Street money. Uh, we actually did it uh, with the with the whole idea of sharing equity with our agents and brokers who are out there actively producing uh, listing and sales uh, out in the marketplace. And so we we did that. And, uh, and so we created a, a, a equity plan, an icon plan. And then we also in um, uh, 2015, I believe, we introduced the ability for agents to actually uh, contribute 5%. It's uh, you can contribute or not contribute, but uh, 5% and uh, into our stock comp plan and effectively receive uh, stock at a 10% uh, discount to market. So originally it was at 20%. We were on the OTC, it was restricted stock. Now we're fully NASDAQ listed. And, um, and so there's that, uh, that discount and that's calculated at the end of every month. So um, for those who are participating this month, um, you know, obviously a little bit better price than it was a few months ago, a couple months ago, but still, uh, you know, the opportunity to build up additional equity um, is there and, and meaningful uh, for that. And then of course, agents do have the ability if they want to, they can, um, be participants in the, uh, because we're NASDAQ, uh, they can um, buy as much stock technically as they want, or, or, or in theory, as, as much as they want through, uh, through their stock broker, et cetera. So it's pretty cool. Um, you know, we're shoulder to shoulder uh, with everyone uh, in, in EXP. There's no second class of stock. Everybody's part of the same shareholdership structure and uh, pretty, pretty excited. So um, we also have our uh, Agent Advisory Council or AAC and uh, what that basically is, is we've got uh, um, a dozen of our agents and brokers who we will uh, work with on, um, on just getting a voice of the agent as we make decisions, uh, making sure that they're helping us with some of the bigger decisions, uh, hopefully keeping them informed uh, as quickly as possible. Obviously, right now, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and we're trying to keep you know those 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 folks informed as much as possible. So as we're making some of the some of the tougher decisions, um, th that uh, that they're helping us with messaging and other things, and as well helping us make sure we're thinking through through the uh, through the issues as best as possible. Um, our revenue share plan. So this 
back in 2009, what we did is, is we literally said, okay, if we are able to give agents a better, a better split, which um, we'll go through in a little bit, but we're, our agents are an 80, 20 split, no franchise fees, $16,000 cap. Um, can we uh, share a percentage of the revenue with our agents and brokers on transactions that close? And the, and the answer was yes. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, and um, we looked at, quite frankly, the fastest growing real estate brokerages up until that point, or, or real estate brands. And uh, having been at Keller Williams, and the reason why I was at Keller Williams was, was to a large extent because they had a profit share plan um, when I was there. And uh, I saw that as a way to build a, a secondary stream of income, a potential retirement stream. Um, and uh, the, the long and short of it is that a lot of the agents that I had were not at profitable offices. And so there wasn't a huge amount of profit shared. But I said uh, at one time when we, when we were uh, getting ready to build EXP, I said, if we ever build a company, we're going to do revenue share, not profit share. And the, the basic logic of it was that a, a good or even a decent management team will figure out a way to break even if it, based on the cost constraints of a company. And if we make revenue share a cost component of the company, um, then, then the management team uh, should be able to run a company uh, with, uh, with a revenue share expense piece uh, attached to it. So we, we built that out. It's, uh, we've run it since 2009. Uh, we've made a couple little tweaks here and there. Uh, nothing uh, really significant, but, but since then, uh, we've grown um, the company uh, to obviously 28,000 agents, and it's made a meaningful difference in a lot of people's lives over the years. Uh, and uh, uh, for those who take advantage of it. Now, most of our agents are just active listing and selling, but uh, we, we do have you know, some agents that you know, their full-time livelihood is based on agent attraction and, and helping agents succeed uh, in the listing and selling side of the business. And, and the revenue share side uh, has, has provided a lot of meaningful upside to, to, to some of those folks, but also some of our existing agents. We've got folks like uh, um, Brent Gove, many of you've heard his name, but uh, you know he runs his own real estate sales team selling hundreds of homes a year, but he's also uh, one of our top uh, revenue share earners as well in the company, um, you know, ex sharing the EXP opportunity to agents and brokers all over, um, all over the country. I've seen him in Canada. My guess is uh, once, we, uh, once uh, we're able to get him over, over to, uh, well, to the UK and Australia, he'll be there too, um, but uh, pretty, uh, pretty exciting stuff. So, um, our plan, uh, generally speaking, here's the here's the plan. Now there's some tweaks that are that are being done right now, just uh, based on some stuff we did. But generally, here is the way it's laid out. Uh, agents receive three and a half percent of the uh, GCI. Uh, we call it adjusted gross commission income, but it's shifting to three and a half percent of GCI um, to uh, on levels one. So basically, you can you know earn up to I think it's twenty eight hundred dollars on agents who are uh, who you've brought to EXP every year that they're with EXP, and um, and also if you're with EXP or in a, in some sort of retirement state with EXP, um, you'll receive that. Uh, you receive up to thirty two hundred dollars on agents that are on, on your second level, and uh, up to two thousand dollars in third level, et cetera, uh, based on certain production benchmarks, and as a result. Um, you know, as your organization grows, um, you know, it can become, it can become meaningful. You've got, you know, a lot of agents earning a few thousand a month. Uh, and we've got, uh, you know, some agents that historically um, have been earning a pretty substantial income uh, in, in, in the plan. It's kind of obnoxious, the numbers, so I won't mention them, but, uh, but it can be quite sizable in just helping EXP grow. Uh, EXP World, you're, you're actually in part of EXP World's campus right now. This is the EXP Explained uh, Theater. It's actually part of our growth and operations group in, uh, in EXP. And so this, this auditorium uh, is available specifically for, um, for the EXP Explains that we do multiple times a week. And uh, this is actually my first EXP Explained I've literally done um, in probably uh, in, in, in world probably in the last two or three years. So, so this is the first time I've done one for a while. Hopefully I'm not messing too much stuff up, but uh, I'm sure people will coach me afterwards if there's some things I missed or misspoke about. Uh, but uh, uh, EXP World 
is um, is, a, is an amazing place uh, to be able to collaborate, work together, get support, um, and uh, mastermind, et cetera. So uh, we have, uh, I don't know how many different spaces, but I think we've got over 100 different spaces in EXP. And, um, uh, and so it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, just a quick question. I see, uh, can revenue share be willed? Uh, it can be part of your state to pass on to, because it comes out of commissions. You just have to have somebody, uh, a relative of yours that is in fact licensed with EXP to continue to receive it, but it is, it is uh, willable from that perspective. Explore the community. So uh, this is just a few more pictures. Uh, information desk, uh, we've got uh, uh, team collaboration, lots of training. We just had on Friday, I think it was our largest leadership meeting uh, that I remember uh, in, in our leadership meeting. Uh, we had 646 people in our auditorium in World on Friday. And uh, we've had in, in uh, our auditorium actually in excess of 700 and it'll actually support upwards of a thousand plus um, attendees in, in our auditorium. Uh, and so this space that we're in will actually expand to support, you know, over a thousand people in, in world. So it's pretty cool. Uh, the ability to sort of use these different spaces, uh, as if you're in a physical space and we can create, you know, as many virtual spaces for people to break out in, have conversations, uh, team meetings, state meetings, um, city-based meetings, uh, any type of mastermind. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> um, if you go to the um, slide deck that's at join.exprealty.com, you can actually go in and watch this video. I won't play it in here, but literally we've got soccer fields and other things that you can sort of, sort of uh, uh, see and, um, um, and, and do things on. Um, and then, you know, the, um, here's a big one. We, we just introduced this in November. And of course, right now, probably it's, it's as top of mind as any other uh, thing that's out there. Uh, we actually introduced um, uh, EXP Agent Healthcare uh, Program. It's uh, it's an it's a healthcare cooperative. Um, been around for I think 30 years. The underlying platform has been uh, uh, has been taking care of people in in larger cooperatives. We introduced it, uh, and uh, to to a large extent, it provides better coverage uh, than traditional insurance at a lower cost and independent contractors can take advantage of it. So it's been, it's been amazing to see a lot of the testimonials from, from agents and brokers. There's a few states, I think uh, Washington State, um, maybe Vermont, I'm not sure. There's like three states where we can't actually offer this, but in most states in the US, uh, you can actually get on the EXP agent healthcare plan. And, um, uh, and, and it's been uh, a tremendously well received uh, much less expensive, but the coverage has been uh, has been great um, to date. So something definitely to to look at if you're as an agent needing to get some sort of health coverage. Uh, we've got some really really great health coverage, and you can check it out at expagenthealthcare.com uh, if you want more information. Um, some of the other solutions um, we exp enterprise. It's our own um, corporate intranet. Uh, of just uh, everything from marketing centers to you know, your commission details to uh, all the things that you would need to do to sort of just keep track of your just general underlying business. Uh, Skyslope, many of you have heard of Skyslope. It's one of the uh, largest uh, transaction management workflow platforms uh, out there. Uh, you know, it's sort of up there, Dot Loop and Skyslope are kind of the big, the two big ones. Um, and so all of our agents do get uh, uh, get their own Skyslope accounts um, so they can, you know, submit all their transact date uh, materials uh, electronically and and get them reviewed, and it, and it works uh, works quite well. Workplace by Facebook. This one is uh, we we started on Workplace uh, in January of 2018, and and it has been a complete game changer in the way that we communicate and collaborate with agents and brokers and staff. Uh, it's our own private Facebook uh, for EXP and, and every one of our agents, brokers and staff are on there.
fear. About two and a half years now. I'm a, I, I'm a senior citizen. Which... And uh, in so many different conversations, so many different ways to, that you're supported. We even have safety check if there's a natural disaster. Um, and uh, uh, we're, we're checking on our agents um, and we're, we're keeping people highly engaged and highly involved uh, in, the, uh, in the business of EXP. And you can have this on your, your phone. Um, you've got the workplace app, workplace chat app. And so you're connected to everybody in real time. And that's one of the reasons why we our business has not missed a beat. Every time I go to a conference, um, Inman, um, uh, uh, the Swanapool uh, uh, T3 Summit last year, uh, but anytime I speak uh, and I talk to broker owners, uh, I, I think that I, I tell them that the number one thing they should be doing right now is getting their company onto Workplace by Facebook. Most of them don't do it. Uh, most of them haven't had to do it because they've had you know, the physical office environment and maybe the Tuesday morning sales meetings and, and they've sort of just keep people sort of up to date and there were small offices. But for large, large enterprises or people who wanna really stay engaged and involved, it's probably the, probably the next to what we've been able to do with EXP World, it's probably our number two enablement technology that's allowed us to do what we need to do. So it's pretty darn cool. Um, definitely check it out. Um, if you're, even if you're not coming to EXP and you're just watching this video and you have an office, you have a team, um, check it out. Could, uh, it could be something that allows you to stay engaged and together, uh, even, uh, uh, you know, while we're, while things are going on with, uh, with the COVID-19 and everything else. Um, CRM lead gen, we talked a little bit about KV core, um, great platform. Um, we've been using it now for a number of years, uh, I think, and I haven't got the stats for 2019 yet, but in 2018, we, our agents generated over 2 million leads into their database through KV Core. And that's, you know, we finished the year in 2018 at like 15,000 agents. Uh, now we're over 28,000 agents. But uh, so I can only imagine what we did in 2019, but it certainly was probably well in excess of 3 million leads that our agents and brokers generated through KV Core into their database that they incubated. And, and obviously, you know, based on their follow-up, they're gonna close a certain percentage of, we, we do know that the best agents um, will generally close anywhere from five to 9% of the, the leads that come into their database. And then for those who aren't good at getting leads in their database, we also have a platform called Making It Rain where we'll actually manage your spend, your lead gen, and actually get people into your database for you. And then it's up to you to then to work on converting those. Now, you'll hear a lot of mixed bags, even inside of EXP about the quote unquote quality of leads. But for those who actually work the leads um, and are truly um, interested in, in actually following up with the ones that are real, uh, it's a great way to build your business. If you're just hoping that people are going to just stick their hand up and always give you good, accurate information and tell you exactly when they're going to buy a home, probably not worth spending the money. But if you're uh, if you're if you're serious about working your database, spending you know one or two hours a day minimum every day working with the folks in your database and then and then scheduling whatever follow up, it's it's a phenomenal uh, uh, way to to add leads to your database. So um, KV Core is great great platform if you use it. And, uh, uh, and for those who, who really take uh, internet lead gen uh, seriously. Uh, marketing and branding, we've got a, our own marketing center. Uh, I don't know how many thousands of, of, uh, of uh, materials are generated every week, but, it's, uh, uh, but our agents literally have access to a full on marketing center. Um, and then we've got a number of preferred partners as well. Um, Intralend is our own in-house in mortgage company that actually works with your own preferred mortgage loan officer. So you tap in your own loan officer into the platform. Uh, Silverline Title and Escrow, um, you know, we're, it's, it, we've been building it out multiple states already. And uh, given what's going on right now, it's actually well positioned once we come out of what's going on as being a, uh, a really solid Title and Escrow company 
that um, can deal with remote closings, can re can deal with a lot of the remote stuff that we're dealing with right now. Um, and, and it's set up from day one to be very cloud-based. Uh, Express offers, we're, uh, you know, it's as other iBuyers are shutting down, Express offers is up and running in 14 or so states. And the difference is, is Express offers, we don't use any of our own um, uh, money, similar, you know, where you've got Zillow, Open Door, Fin, all using their own capital to buy homes. Uh, we're working with investors in those local marketplaces that actually understand the local market, that are actually still on the back end of the Express Offers platform, making offers on homes. Now, they're probably making offers on fewer homes. They're probably offering way less than, than was offered just a few weeks ago. Uh, but we still have the platform up, still has transactions going through. Uh, and and so uh, we think that you know once we come through this, um, Express Offers can be a great platform for you to tap into. If you have buyers who buy uh, a number of homes every year, I think uh, up to date they've had to buy about 50 homes a year to be on the back end to bid on homes. But if you've got buyers that that you, you want to have on the back end, you can get them in there every time they buy a home. You, you get a little bit of a a spiff. Um, for any property they buy. And then as an agent, any properties that you put in from an agent perspective, there's, uh, you'll get paid on, on those. And then um, more importantly is, again, probably more so once we come out of this, uh, we've got a lead generation strategy that nobody else has uh, that we're gonna be ramping up for agents so that you can generate a high amount of listing leads into your database uh, without paying the exorbitant fees that some of the other companies that generate uh, uh, listing leads through um, through a uh, iBuyer platform are charging. So excited about that. Uh, America's prefer, uh, uh, pre preferred home warranty. Um, how would you like to um, avoid ever having to pay anything relative to your E&O deductible? Uh, all you have to do is at least offer America's perform preferred home warranty to any of your uh, would be um, uh, any of your sellers during the listing side of the uh, of the business. And and even if they don't um, at, attach a warranty, you as an agent, if there's something that goes wrong in that deal where E&O insurance kicks in, any deductibles are automatically paid by America's preferred home warranty from from an agent's perspective. We've got a moving hub, build a sign, 360 tours. Um, that's going to become a big deal. Uh, I think a lot of people, even you know, you know, for the next year or two, uh, they're not going to want as many p in, in, as many buyers walking through their homes, and buyers aren't going to want to walk through as many homes. So we've got our own 360 uh, platform, um, and then uh, uh, some of the other things, CE Shop, et cetera. So, so these are all preferred partners, uh, all part of the EXP ecosystem, and uh, certainly take advantage of those. Um, Joining EXP, becoming a shareholder, you know, here's just a few little quotes, but uh, the bottom line is we've got some of the best of the best agents and brokers in the country have joined EXP over the last 10 years. Uh, we are super agent centric and meaning that I, every day I put my hat on, I put my hat on as an agent first, even though obviously I'm the, the, the uh, founder of EXP, CEO of EXP World Holdings. Um, but we make all of our decisions on how do we enhance the agent value proposition. And, uh, and as a result, you know, we, we built something that um, uh, I heard the phrase, a safe haven in, in, in the current marketplace. Uh, so so um, and in terms of fees uh, and expenses, 80-20 split, um, uh, $16,000 cap, uh, 85 a month. Um, you know, there's, small, there's a few other little small um, uh, pieces in there. Uh, there's 149 to start, and um, um, and then there's a broker review fee. But we're we're fairly inexpensive. We're not the cheapest in town, uh, but we're definitely not the most expensive. We're pretty much anybody who's got a split program that's out there, which is most real estate brokers is out there. We beat them on either the 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 uh, the split, the cap, or both. Um, there's very few companies that can compete with us. And we keep enough money in the the system that actually pays leadership to help us grow the company. And so um, certainly you can find a cheaper place to hang your license, but you won't find 
the concentration of leaders and people interested in your success as you will at eXp. And, uh, and that's just, you know, that's an amazing part of the business is you've got a ton of people, even people that haven't brought you into the business that are, that are seriously interested in seeing you be a successful at eXp. It's like no other brokerage out there and uh, I'm super, uh, super uh, stoked to be in business with each and every one of, of, of them. Um, and, uh, you know, production matters. You know, I, I don't know if our real trends numbers have come out so far this year, but we just released, uh, you know, our numbers last year. We, you know, grew, uh, you know, 80% uh, last year, uh, over 90, I think over 90% our revenue side, but we, we, we've we been growing like crazy. Uh, obviously, growth will be impacted a little bit based on what's going on presently, uh, but our value proposition is such that we'll, once everything you know, finishes up um, and, and we get back to some sort of new normal, we're well positioned um, to be the place that many, many agents will call home uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, most of which I won't talk about, but you know intuitively uh, to be the case given what's going on out there uh, at the moment. Um, so we la last piece of it is, uh, um, you know, become a shareholder, uh, which is really um, you know, become an agent with us. You can you can start the uh, the process at join.exprealty.com. It's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, one of the things I one another thing that I want to touch on. Uh, we also have uh, right now, you know, a lot of people that are starting to feel uh, the pinch because of of what's going on with coronavirus. We we do have um, a platform called Extend a Hand, uh, we which is really to help agents, brokers, and and staff um, sort of through through times of need. Um, and, uh, you know, with EXP, we encourage you to one, give to extend a hand if you, if you feel that you have the ability to, to do that. Uh, but two, also, if you need help, um, and you're, you're with EXP, um, you know, you know, if you need some help, uh, apply for some help through extend a hand. Um, we've got kind of a, a policy where we generally help, uh, everybody who, who requests at least at some level. Uh, and uh, and so it's a great way for us to sort of uh, to to give back to those who uh, self-identify, uh, you know, help with the with a little bit here and there uh, for for a number of the agents, brokers, and staff that might uh, might be hurting at this point. So I just want to throw that out there. Uh, if you're with the XP, if you need some help. Uh, definitely um, reach out to extend a hand. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out. But why don't we, um, any questions? And we can use the text chat in here. Feel free to also jump on the Slido on the uh, on, on the right screen there. Or on your questions, go ahead, and, um, go ahead and ask. And then I can also, I'm going to also unmute uh, um, the audience. So if anybody wants to turn on their mic and ask a question, happy to do that as well. Is there a deep explanation on how to earn by building a team tiered system and all the numbers are a bit confusing. Um, so every team's going to be going to be different. Um, obviously, the if if you um, sort of look at the way it all flows out. Bottom line is 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 we, we basically tier it out in that every time you bring on 5 more agents up to 25 agents. Uh, and that are productive, that have sold a, a property you know, sometime in the last uh, six months, it'll open up another level of what we refer to as our exponential share. So, um, uh, so you earn automatically three and a half percent on any agent you personally bring in, uh, and uh, you earn a small percentage down the next six levels, um, and and that can add up over time, uh, depending on how big your group is. But each time you you sort of expand your what we refer to as your front line of agents with productive uh, agents who are actively selling, it will open up another level of income into the RevShare system. And, uh, um, and, and 
hope, you know, I've obviously I've been doing this for 10 plus years, so I've got a pretty good sized group to say the least, but you know, we've got, you know, a lot of agents who've been here just even just a short period of time, a year or less that have built a pretty sizable um, passive income uh, from that. And, uh, but it just depends on, you know, how seriously somebody wants to take that side of the business. First and foremost, um, a residential real estate sales company, which is why uh, almost uh, all of the, actually all of the equity benefits are for active producing selling agents, other than uh, there is a little bit of equity when you bring somebody into EXP and, uh, uh, and then the, uh, and then when they sell their first property. Okay, it looks like Joshua Rulin teams at EXP Realty. Awesome. Okay, well, I'm uh, happy to continue to uh, to hang out here. Um, Sean, if you want to shut her down on the uh, on the live stream side, thanks everyone for jumping in and. Uh...